My beautiful Cancers. <sighs> Welcome to your December 2017 reading. Um, it's a big month. It's a huge month. There's a lot happening, you guys, um, for everyone. For everyone. You guys are getting... You're shifting into an interesting gear as a water sign and as a Cancer. It's, a, it's going to be a time of shifting emphasis on what is getting highlighted for you. Before I start, I just want to mention that I'm wearing the beautiful Pink Loons stuff, and she just reopened her shop with brand new stuff. Check her out. She's giving you 15% off. I'm going to put it in the description box. Check it out. I love her so much. Anyway, back to you guys. Okay, so December is interesting. We have a, we have a Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So that's having us all kind of you know, get back to the details by for the end of the year and just really get real with what we're doing and what we're creating. So it's going to be a good time to slow down and look internally. Um, we also, let me look at my notes here because I have a lot of notes this, this month. Um, December 3rd, we have the full moon in Gemini and that's in your 12th house and full moons illuminate, right? They, they show us something. Um, so that new, that full moon might really, it's, it's, a, it's in the spiritual house of secrets. Uh, so you might be feeling, uh, like you're really looking at any old wounds, anything that's been left over from this year, honestly, since the last new moon of the year, and it is in such a personal placement for you. Um, you know, we're in Sagittarius for a lot of the year, which is, you know, your sixth house of, you know, how you're doing, you know, your day to day routines, how you're giving, how you're taking care of yourself, health and habit. But you know, we have, <laughs> so we have a new moon in that sector, which is all about you know, so a new moon or planting seeds. How do you want to take care of yourself, Cancer? Because sometimes I think you're really good at taking care of others. You're good at like, you know, getting, staying home and like taking care of yourself. But how are you taking care of yourself? Um, you might just want to look at that. What are your goals for that in the new year? I'm not necessarily a big New Year's resolution person, but I do think just thinking about what this year brought to you as far as challenges and what, where it was pushing you, where do you need to take better care of yourself is what that's going to bring up. Now, the big news, of course, is Saturn moving from Sagittarius to Capricorn. And for you lovely Cancers, this means we're going to be looking at your seventh house. As Saturn moves into your seventh house of Capricorn, this is your partnership house. This is your relationship house. Um, you know, Saturn in Capricorn is happy. It flows well with that energy. So they kind of help each other out to get practical things done and get very real with stuff. However, you know, Saturn is the planet of restriction. Saturn is the planet that will pull you back and get very real with you as far as what you need to address in your relationships. So we are gearing up for the next couple of years for you. I mean, really, Saturn is going to be in Capricorn, I believe, till sometime in 2020. Uh, it goes out for a moment, but it's going to be very firmly planted in Capricorn. Um, so you're going to be having seventh house lessons, relationship lessons for a while. Um, and it's not to say that you're not going to have love. I don't want to scare cancers. It's not to say that you're not going to have love. It's not to say that you're not going to have partnership. In fact, in some ways, this might be a very beneficial energy for you to build real partnerships, not just partnerships that start off hot and heavy and seem beautiful and are this ideal. And then they fizzle out and they leave you devastated, but partnerships that last. Because the thing that Saturn does is it builds things that last. So you're going to have to get ready for that kind of energy being dominant for you um, coming up here when your relationships sticking it out, building something real. Now, we start off with the Ace of Swords for this reading this month, which is beautiful. Um, there, there's a lot going on with communication with that full moon in Gemini, such a, such a communicative energy. And then that full moon is also at the beginning of the Mercury retrograde, which is the communication planet. So uh, a lot of this month I'm noticing has been about truth telling. In fact, it's next to the tower. I don't want to scare you guys. I feel like I'm already like making this a scary reading. It's not, I, I promise you guys that, um, Things are good. We're just building, we're getting prepped. We're going into solstice at the end of the month. We're going into your seventh house. Sun is going into the seventh house and we're a new year is starting. There's a lot happening. Plus the Saturn shift. There's so much happening all at once. And the thing is, it's causing us to get to the truth. It's, try, it's causing us to look at everything that has happened over the last year or two and get right with it in our heads and get right with it as far as what the truth is. So we have the sword, the ace of swords, and we have 
the tower. So these are both truth, tell truth tellers. These are cleansers. I think of them kind of as palate cleansers, right? If you've been eating some kind of dish for a long time and it's time to switch dishes, it's nice to have something that cleanses your palate, <laughs> right? Um, you know, Ace of Swords will cut through and just give you a new perspective, give you a new bit of information that can help you move forward in life. Honestly, it's a really, really great new start. And it's coming with this burning down of something, right? Now, when I see this, I think this relates to a lot of what you guys have experienced this year. And I think it's the closing out of a cycle. I think there's been a cycle that you have put yourself in when it comes to your self-care and the people around you and just it could be for each of you this could be different for some of you this can be love relationships absolutely it can be family it can be work habits have you been overworking yourself something has not been serving you for a while and this year has been teaching you about that it's been teaching you about that day to day what's not working um and there seems to be some final check in here uh clearing this out because it's time for it to go and it can't serve you anymore so you know, the beginning of this month with that Mercury retrograde, right? With that full moon as well. And that's being impacted by Neptune. There's a lot going on there. I highly suggest actually doing some research on it just for your own benefit. And I will also be doing a full moon video as well. So I will have that up hopefully in the next week um, before the full moon happens. Um, but at any rate, the one thing with this is you might want to react <laughs> Take it in, let this sit, pay attention to the details because it's setting you up for something really great. Now here's the thing you guys, the next two cards, we have the two of pentacles and the eight of pentacles. And it's funny actually, um, I think Libra got this too, uh, the, this, these two cards together, interestingly enough. So, okay, so the two of pentacles is interesting because this is, you know, you guys are caregivers and you're so loving. And sometimes you like to do this thing where you want to take care of others. You want to play a role. You want to even everything out. You want to, you feel responsible for that role. Um, and so it's tempting to juggle like this guy does, right? But it doesn't actually cause equilibrium in the external world. As you can see, it's still all crazy. The sea is, has big waves. It doesn't matter how much this guy does anything. It's not going to change the external world. So one thing you're going to be noticing, and this might have to do with this, you're going to want to make people comfortable. You're going to want to accede to people's wishes. Don't do it. Just listen to what is good for you, ca Cancers. Please do that. Because, you know, the eight of, eight of Pentacles is fantastic. This is about what you're doing in the world, what you're creating in the world, how you're making things happen. And this is where this Capricorn energy is going to start affecting you, I think. Because the next card, too, is the, um, is the Knight of Pentacles, right? And since Capricorn is your opposite sign, this relational sign, we're getting down to the bones of what, what you need to, what work you need to do in order to be in a long-term loving relationship. So this is a bit of a reality check, you guys, um, which is not to say it's bad, because here's the thing. When I see the two of pentacles, this is this has a lot to do with how we love ourselves and how we limit ourselves, how we believe our worth, right? And cancer is because you're giving, because you care so much and you feel so much and you want to give to others. Sometimes what happens with your energy is you can get to a point where you kind of become your value and your worth and your and and your validation comes from giving to others and playing roles for others and giving and giving and giving. And you're a little bit scared that if you stop doing that, like this energy is, that somehow you won't be lovable anymore. And so you have a blockage up there, right? There's a blockage there in allowing somebody else to be that caregiver for you, allowing somebody else to pick up the slack, allowing somebody else to figure out what they need to do in order to be happy. So when we get these two cards right here, yes, this is about the work you're doing in the world. So some of you may be really getting some great work done, actually, despite the Mercury retrograde. Um, the energy here is picking up for great work, you know, being very productive, maybe even doing very well on the financial sector at the end of the year and prepping for the new year, right? Set planting some really great seeds for getting a lot of work done. But this energy is also about letting go of that standard that you have to help all the time, that you have to hold everybody's hand through everything all the time, that you have to play a role for people to make them comfortable. That's blocking you from accepting, right? 
you got to slow down a little bit. And this is where the Capricorn influence, that Saturn Capricorn influence is going to pick up for you. You're going to be getting highlighted on this time and again. Um, and not only that, you know, we're having that Jupiter in your fourth house or wait, no, in your fifth house, sorry, um, of romance, right? So we're getting the expansion of what romance looks like and what that, that experience is. And we're getting also the restriction in partnership. So, you know, <laughs> you're going to have both of them going on, but this is a really important underlying thing is to realize that you have to slow down and, and be this Knight of Pentacles. Cause you know what the Knight of Pentacles does? He does not move much. He holds back. And now you might have somebody in your life who's very slow mover romantically or business wise. But this is also saying to me that you have to slow down and allow others to meet you halfway. Um, but the thing is, you guys, as we head into your seventh house, as we head into Capricorn, as we head out of your sixth and into your seventh near the end of the month, the energy is amazing. And that's why I say, you know, we start with this kind of truth telling illumination. And initially, you're going to be like, there's no way this 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 is going to be helpful because it's a little scary. It's new territory. You're you're going into a new phase. The tower is all about opening a new phase. You know what the tower also is for anybody who's been taking your resources, sucking your energy, having a power dynamic over you. This is toppling that completely. It's pretty awesome. Um, so there's this 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 reset button that's that's starting at the beginning of the month truth coming out we're working on our relationships we're working on our in our, our on our truths on what we need on what we really need on what the seeds we want to plant but as we go into capricorn we are already opening up something beautiful i'm just going to show you these last four cards because they are just fantastic and intense <laughs> but with cancers you're getting a lot of major arcana three of wands the sun the magician the fool. Wow. <sighs> this shift is doing some really interesting things. A lot of you, I think, have been sending out wishes for what you want in a relationship, in a partnership, in life, in life, in what you're doing in the world too. I don't want to undervalue that because that's also been, you all have been spending the last couple of years putting these wishes out and there's been kind of slow movement. And you've been wondering if they'll ever come to fruition, right? That's, will it ever happen? Will this ever really happen? Or am I just delusional, right? Well, this three of wands is, is that those ships returning. So, you know, the story with the two and then the three of wands is that it's this merchant, right? He sent his ships out across the world. And, you know, when you did that, especially back before planes and before, you know, steam engines and all these amazing things, sending off something to go out into the world, you didn't know when you would see it again. You didn't know how long that was going to come back. And so the sight of your ships on the horizon, like this guy has here, was like, you know, the most amazing thing. And that really is a lot of the times how, you know, we're preparing ourselves to have what we really want in life. We're getting ready to be ready to be ready to be ready, which is an Abraham Th Hicks thing. Check them out. It's amazing. Um, and here we are, right? Here's that turn. And that's why I'm seeing the Capricorn in your seventh, or the Saturn in Capricorn, your seventh house, your relational hat sign is really good for you. Um, because it's bringing in something real that will last not something that comes and goes something that shows up to the party um your ships are coming in something's coming in now like this is near the end of the month right and this is setting you up for next year so you're going to be starting to get the, the the little tentacles of this it's a weird way to describe it but i'm mean, i'm talking to cancer so maybe like an ocean theme is good but here you go, you guys. What is the, What are those ships look like? What does that ship look like? The sun, the magician, the fool. You guys get the fool a lot. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like I'm always like, you guys take a leap of faith, believe in things, and you're all you're always like, why? <laughs> but these are these are very creative energies. They're even a little bit. All three are actually extremely impulsive, which I find really interesting. 
because the sun is, you know, when the sun is out, you feel like playing, you feel like trying things, you feel like playing a game, being naked and hopping on a horse. I don't know. You know, it's like the sun is very much about creativity and kind of throwing caution to the wind because it's fun, because we're playing, because we're, we're creating, because something is growing out of the soil and the sun is nurturing it, right? It's, it's a really warm, positive energy and it's great for you guys. Um, kind of coming out of the fog, right? The magician, on the other hand, is a destabilizer. He likes to come in and shake things up and try something different. He'll put something in your path that you never thought you wanted and initially it'll be stressful and then you'll like it. Um, he tends to come in and just throw things together, ca caution to the wind. This guy does not care. The magician will come in and, you know, throw everything on its side, but for all for the good. The fool will just put his foot out on a ledge with no question. Um, because he knows that he wants to find out what's next. Regard he doesn't have the information, but he wants to find out what's next. All three of these. <laughs> I'm like taking this in, Cancer, because, wow. All three of these are about going into unknown territory. Not because you have all this information and you've had so much life experience that you can now shut yourself off, but like, you don't care anymore. It's almost like all the stuff that you've been through, all the stuff, all the, all the intensity and fire and this right here, and then the giving and then this like slow work and all that. It's like you hit a point here almost. It's like a rubber band that's snapped or like an arrow. You know, we're in Sagittarius season most of December. An arrow, you know, you're pulling it back and you're releasing it. You almost are, it's at that release point where it's like, yeah, you've been through all this. Things have been moving slow. Things have been frustrating. There have been setbacks and confusions and fog and like lots of questions coming up. Things have been pretty good, but like there's been questions. The sun, the magician, the fool are energies of somebody who <laughs> has come through all that and you get to a point where it's so absurd. <laughs> Life you realize is absurd and you're just ready. You don't even care, you know, like in a good way, in that way of just feeling free to just try it. Just try it. Um, why not? Um, which means, which means you guys energetically, some blockage is leaving. Some blockage within yourself, maybe very, very deeply buried, is leaving you open, completely open to the next thing in life. Um, which means that your ships can meet you. Your ships are meeting you. Um, now, like I said, December is funny. It's a seed planting month. It's a time to slow down. All of us, every single one of us needs to slow down because the energy is so intense as we get toward Capricorn season. We gotta slow down while we're in Sag season um, because <laughs> We're setting some, setting some stages for 2018. For you, the precedent I'm seeing here is the sun, the magician, the fool. I think when I see those three, this is, these are going to be surprises, really good surprises, but the kind of thing where you don't believe anything's gonna shift in one area of your life and it does. You get that opportunity, you meet that person, you put your foot out on that ledge and it works out. I mean, it's the kind of thing where surprises are going to be coming into your life and changing them radically. So this is a really great month to slow down because as these surprises come in, you're going to be asked to shift a lot, constantly. Which you guys are great initiators, so this, you know, you, you have that, you can roll with a surprise and make it work. But... It does take energy. Years where you get surprise influxes of wonderful things and magic can be years that also take a lot of battery power. So keep that in mind, you guys. Um, but here's the thing. How I'd wrap this up, because I do want to wrap it up and give it kind of a nice shape, the way the month is going to flow. You are going to feel maybe struck by lightning, struck by truth, struck by something maybe even harsh and heavy. You are going to feel like you kind of have to go in and do some inner homework, figure out some basic points in yourself, in blockages that have stopped you. Collect all your lessons you've learned this year, 
put them right in your mind, release them, because then your ships come in. Then the magic surprises are waiting in the wings to meet you. <laughs> and this is erratic energy, this is wild energy, but it's also energy with really good intentions. Really good intentions that want to create and experience the world. So that looks like new work opportunities. It looks like travel. It looks like love. It looks like resurgence of energy. It looks like you having that magical core that exudes out to the external world. It's really exciting, you guys. This is a deep one. This is, this is an extremely impactful reading. One of the most for the month. And, um, Cancer, you guys have something going on really cool here. So, Slingshot. We're heading, we're heading into new territory. I love you guys so much. I'm going to leave my website, my email, and my Instagram below. I do private readings um, with Skype and phone and uh, with video recorded readings as well. So please check me out. I would love to work with you guys. It's always a pleasure to work with my cancer friends. Um, I'm also going to leave Pink Loon's website as well as that promo code for my special lovely viewers. So you get that 15% off some of her beautiful handmade work. Please check her out. I love you guys so much. I'm looking forward to January and seeing where the sun, magician, and fool are taking you. Um, it's going to be an exciting new year. Sending you all the best.